Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Future Gamers Podcast. My name is Jacob Best in the Realm Hotter. I am joined as always by Trollbeard. Out of there. And Bob is out. So Surprise. it's just us. It's probably going to be a shorter one because I have barely slept the last two, three days. And I guess we could just have Trollbeard talk to himself. <laughs> Probably the most intelligent conversation this podcast has had. I, I I talk to myself a lot. Yeah. Usually when there's butter on my nipples, but let's not talk about that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's just go ahead and jump right into uh, what we've been playing this week, because I haven't played shit. Uh, one of my games is just something I've been playing, and the other one I played like two weeks ago and forgot to talk about. So that's that. But uh, I started playing uh, Graveyard Keeper again. And I am so damn far in this game. I think I'm like 290 days or something. God damn. Yeah, you're going <laughs> deep. Um, doing a lot of like the alchemy stuff. I got the church upgraded. I tried going into the town. Uh, I can now sell meat. So there's a whole lot of things I'm able to do now. The more you play that game, it really very slowly just opens up, and it's it's kind of nice. I like the slow progression. Like, Stardew Valley has a better pace, probably. But this game, I feel like, is a lot more rewarding. And I like all the different crafting stations. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> They're just kind of great. Like, I like playing with dead bodies instead of crops. Actually, I've I don't do the so if you don't feed the donkey, he doesn't bring you bodies. So I don't feed him very often. So I'm not a very good graveyard keeper. I'm a much better farmer uh and like dungeon crawler than I am a graveyard <laughs> keeper. The uh dungeon crawling mechanics are very simple. Well, I guess it's like Stardew, you just swing a sword. That's it. But uh, there's a really creepy sound. Oh yeah, I never, even, I never even came across the dungeon crawling part before I noped out on this game. <laughs> yeah, it, it's really far actually because you have to do a bunch of bullshit, just like with everything else. Yeah, like this game is a bunch of bullshit. The game. It really is, <laughs> and I love that. <laughs> and of course, you explained a few podcasts ago why I love that because it's like my mundane life or whatever. <laughs> whatever you yeah. broke my brain with. <laughs> oh yeah, I think the last time I described it is like uh, I compared it to Cutters. Yes, that's right. It's like hey, you get that small reward, that constant stream of validation. You're succeeding repeatedly. <laughs> like it's good, you know. That's, that's it's pretty much it. But I love it. <laughs> so I don't know what that says about me, but it says something. Well, I mean, there's plenty of people that like work really weird, meticulous jobs and go home and play like Euro Train Simulator for like five hours. I mean, it's, yeah, I it's, probably could play Euro Train Simulator. I really could. It's, you know, your, your brain responds well to those. Steady feedback loops. I mean, like, I love Roller Coaster or Planet Coaster. Um, I have Game Pass again. I need to play Zoo Tycoon. Because I think that's, oh, yeah. that's supposed to be really good. Did you ever get into uh, Viva Pinata? No. I started to and I couldn't understand it. It was fucking weird. Yeah, Viva Pinata is weird, but both of the games are on the Game Pass. Yeah, and I they are it, just and it was just weird like, pinata management sims. Yeah, it was like plant this little bug in the pinata garden and then watch it. Like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, like the whole loop of that thing is upgrading your stuff to where you're adding new locations to then draw the other types of animals in. Right. Maybe I need to play it again. Yeah, like they're really cool. They actually still look really good. They do because they have the really neat art style. Yeah, and that's back when Rare actually made games people wanted. Yeah, what do they make now? 
Um, sea of Thieves. I mean, people enjoy Sea of Thieves. Which apparently, yeah, people enjoy Sea of Thieves, but Sea of Thieves is at least trying. Yeah, they they've got some uh, more DLT. Coming in. I feel like Sea of Thieves is very similar to the Division and Destiny and all these types of games that come out and are like meh, but eventually will be really damn good. Yeah, once they've had a lot of months of additional small stuff to fix yeah. the problems, you know, from launch. But I don't know. Like, I, I liked the, like, five hours I think I spent with Sea of Thieves playing with some random people. Yeah, so did I. And I was like, all right, I'm done here. Good yeah. times. I played it with my brothers, and I was like, this is fun. And after a while, I was like, all right, I'm done. <laughs> Which, you know, like, the Division... Which I got into very late. Destiny 1 I got into very late. Destiny 2 I wish I got into very late. <laughs> There's games... Like, Sea of Thieves is something that, like, I played it... I think I only played it for, like, two or three hours. And yeah. I was very much like, alright, I like this. I'm gonna come back, like, way later. <laughs> yeah, I, I made think, the conscious decision to do that. I think one of the larger issues I have with both Destiny and The Division, is I played both of those games at launch. Yep. And that's a no-go. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Like, I fucking envy the people who are getting into Destiny 2 right now. Because it's just... It's such a fucking good game right now. The end game is that's fantastic. De- that's debatable, but... <laughs> at this point, I just realized, like, hey... Destiny's never going to be the game I want. Yeah, and that was kind of the long. conversation. I, that's the kind of the point I was trying to get to when we're talking about this in yeah. the Discord chat. Was like, it's just, it's clearly not a game for you, and there's nothing wrong with that. Because just yeah. like Fortnite is never going to be a game for me, unless they get rid of building. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, like there's, I'm sure there's tons of games that you enjoy that I'll never enjoy. That's just how it is. Yeah, that's just like again talking about Graveyard Keeper. Like the weird <laughs> feedback loop. People, you know, they respond to different things just chemically in your brain, regardless of, you know, your input of your wants. It's like, hey, this triggers something weird in my body. Yeah. You know, like, like the people that realize that they're down with ASMR. It's like, like I didn't plan on listening to like a man in his 30s talk about you know, opening fucking packs of Magic the Gathering cards, but when I do, it makes my nipples warm. <laughs> <laughs> there is something. It helps, like, yeah, it helps me go to sleep. Yeah? With my No, like, that's that's a lot of people are in ASMR for, like, relaxation and oh, yeah? falling asleep. It's super weird. Like, one of the most successful, like, paid people on YouTube was, like, this Brazilian lady that had done porn previously in her life, but this all came out after the fact, but her whole entire YouTube channel was her just with like her well done manicured hands and her soft voice cracking open those kinder surprise eggs, like the little toy eggs with like the chocolate. Right. She, she made like literally like $30 million one year on YouTube opening up candy eggs. Damn. Cause there's so many, you know, click throughs of little kids and, Adults, you know, like kids just want to see the toys. Yeah. And then adults, you know, listening in for like the calm, soothing voice. And now we're about to open up this pack. Oh, look at that. We got yeah, a Charizard. No, I get it's that. Shiny. My my <laughs> ASMR is on screen right now. It's, yeah. it's Sips. <laughs> Sips and the, the Rooster Teeth podcast. I'll pass out if I turn them on. Or old Rooster Teeth I, podcast, I should say that. Yeah. Rooster Teeth podcast is great, and so is Sips. But if I put on one of their old live streams or podcasts, then that just it just knocks me out. Uh, kind of funny, I can't fucking do it. Because nine times out of ten, Nick's going to do that crazy serial killer laugh. Or Greg's going to start fucking screaming. Yeah, or like, Tim's going to start cry screaming. Or <laughs> still yeah. much screaming. It's like, Andy, what happened? Oh, God, yeah, that's just going to give me a nightmare. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, it's, uh, but no, I was just thinking about when I was doing the ASMR, like, Pokemon card packs. It's like, all right, and we've got a Charizard. Ooh, it's shiny. 
Oh, we've got a comment from Bob. He says, I am fully erect and angry. (laughs) 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 I just imagine him just watching people opening. Didn't he just like send random pictures of like some random packs he opened and he baited you to try to buy some Pokemon yeah, cards? Yeah, no, I went, I went and bought yeah. like five packs of them and didn't get <laughs> shit. I fucking yeah, made what a mad. fuck. I saw yeah. something really, I went to the flea market today and they had Pokemon card packs, but they're in Ziploc bags. <laughs> it was like, yeah, like, who knows what you're going to get? You motherfucker, you put it in a Ziploc bag. <laughs> you put it in a bag, fuck. <laughs> And yeah, but that's them. like. And the lady even told me down. not. She asked me not to open them. <laughs> you know, like the actual like official packs. In some places, they sell them where they're like loose and like a like a clear plastic package on cardboard. I've seen that. So yeah, not even the the foil packs is like. You guys open and sort of these out, like yeah. You, like you fucks, what do you mean? Like, what's in here? It's probably gonna be garbage because this little box is like forty cents cheaper than the regular blind pack. Some card shops will do that, like with Magic. Like they'll have like thirty common cards. You just yeah, they're, they're like fifty cents or something. So you just buy a bunch of those and like oh, I'm gonna build a deck out of this. Um, yeah, I need to fill up my lands. But you also buy it knowing you're not gonna get any rares or anything. This lady today was like, "Don't touch that. Don't open it." Like, fuck you. Like, is there a fucking number one Charizard in here? Is it possible? Get fucked. But yeah, I... Magic, man. Magic and Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh! I gotta stay away from all that shit. Like, it's just a money pit. Oh, yeah. Well, I saw you, like, getting, like, on the precipice of the real deep money pit. And you painting those figures, like the cars. Oh, no. those Those are Hot Wheels. Oh, those are Hot Wheels. Yeah, so you're just like modifying them. Yeah. No, I I told my I told Brian we 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 live streamed it, so you'll check it all out on Future Villains YouTube channel. Um, we're gonna do more, but yeah, he was t- there's this game called Gaslands, and uh, I was like, I, I just can't afford a game right now, bud. And he's like, Well, they're Hot Wheels. <laughs> I was like, Oh, <laughs> well. <laughs> And uh, we went to Walmart, and I spent like four dollars on Hot Wheels and like two dollars on paint. And yeah, we just sat there and painted the fucking Hot Wheels. And he's got sandpaper and stuff like that. And I just removed all the de- painted on decals. And uh, the one is a Tesla, which it was funny. I got the Tesla. It was like, oh, that's cool, the Tesla. And then I got back to the house, and I was like. Oh, this is fucking stupid because it's not electric. <laughs> There's nothing special about this in Hot Wheel form. <laughs> <laughs> so I made a little solar panel and put it on top. Oh, now it's cool. Oh, isn't it precious? And uh, I kind of sanded off the Tesla logo on the side so you can barely see it, like it's been you know old and disheveled and whatnot. Yeah, he's got me into that, and now he's getting me into uh, airsoft. So, well. If you want to know something like, like I've talked about, like how aggressively I fought against ever buying like any collectibles or physical goods yeah. anymore, because I was, I was an OG comic book guy before I ended up moving a lot. That's you know, the other nice thing about that game is I'm keeping all that shit at his house. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's just like, man, I've seen two things fairly recently that, like, they just broke me, and I know. I'm a weak man. I'm going to buy one. Oh, yeah? Is McFarlane Toys and Funko Pop both have, like, a deal with Fortnite. Really? And I've seen the, like, the leaked images of the Cuddle Team leader, McFarlane and Funko, and I'm like, God damn it. I need that pink bear in my life. What's wrong with me? (laughs) Dude, that's... So smart. How has that not happened yet? Like, they've got, like, allegedly, according to, like, the rumors on the Funko thing, there's 24 in the line, and I just popped it up there in the Discord of, like, this little set here. Like, they've got a fair coverage of skins of, like, the season pass stuff. 
and the you know the seasonal items and like they've got like the rare one the ghoul trooper that was only available like last halloween with the scythe they've got the cuddle team leader that's the pink bear yeah dude like like i hate funko pops but this really? one i can't fucking stand them but uh the only ones i've thought about are this cuddle team leader and the cuphead one those are pretty cool which yeah. one, which one's rare uh the bottom left oh like, the guy with the scythe yeah they haven't sold those items since literally like halloween last year huh. these are i don't think any of these are very common skins are they no like you're looking at like each one of these individual skins on here like you're looking at like twenty dollars a pop minimum. I love the gingerbread man. <laughs> yeah, the gingerbread man was from Christmas. Oh, I might have to buy the girl with the sunglasses and the unicorn thing for Kimberly. Oh, that's Bright Bomber. Yeah, Bright Bomber shows up in the store all the time. Okay. You know the really cool thing about that skin in the game is the 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 pickaxe, the unicorn stick. Like as you like get kills or do damage in the game, I forget which which metric. Like the horn lights up rainbow colored and has like a sparkle trail. That's cool. Yeah, like there's a lot of cool small details they've been slowly adding in on Fortnite. The bottom also, right. Is that just the standard skin? That's one of the default skins. Yeah, I, if I were to get one, it'd be that one. I yeah. like that he's holding the blueprint thing. You know what is real fun though, talking about default skins? Apparently, calling people a default has become an insult with kids in schools. <laughs> it's kind of savage. It's like, hey, you can't even afford a fucking skin, you Damn. default. Beat it. <laughs> I was so happy that kids are still being mean to each other these days. It's like, that's a healthy thing. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. And yeah, these are pretty cool. Yeah, the McFarlane ones look really cool, but they're like your standard, you know, like, six or eight inch whatever the range is they normally do because they had a range of them for titanfall 2 that i almost bought a uh, scorch the scorch figure. also has a destiny figure i have one somewhere yeah i have uh the destiny hunter oh that's fucking terrifying that pink thing god damn it yeah, that pink bear skin is terrifying. Yeah. No thanks. <laughs> yeah, my um, that's that's my uh, default skin in game most of the time. That's my PSN logo now. You're like that, that's 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 been my skin. Like if I if I don't feel like playing with something else, it's all cuddle team all the time. <laughs> that's even more terrifying. It's called cuddle team. Yeah, the cuddle team leader. They've had uh, two other versions of that skin. One called the the Patriot team leader or whatever. It was red, white, and blue for 4th of July. And then there's one that's a panda, panda team leader. <laughs> I didn't buy those other two because that's $20 a piece. I was like, I'll stick to my pink bear. I like it more anyway. Yeah, and these are the uh, Destiny ones. I have the Hunter. Comes a thorn. It's Iron yeah. Banner armor. So I, it's, I, it's really nice. I seriously am thinking about because I think the pop has both Cuphead and Mugman. Uh, yeah, I think it does. And I think they also sell a Devil one. Yes, they do. And I'm like, fuck, man, I. I I I don't want this in my life right now. <laughs> oh shit! They sell a uh, uh, Hildeberg. Let me see if I can put this on Discord. Yeah, that's what I was looking at on the actual collection page on the website. Everything's freaky looking. Oh, they have uh, the legendary chalice. Like she's going to be she's going to be a playable character in the DLC next year. Huh. 
Oh, she... Okay, I know what you're talking about. She gave you upgrades or something, didn't she? She's the 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 golden cup that's a ghost. Yeah. Is uh yeah, that's where you find your big power ups, like your special moves. Oh, I see. Hildeberg is in a cup ca- uh, yeah, cuphead um like the random it's figures. one of those it's one of those small random figures, yeah. Yeah. It's not the full size like the cuphead guy. There's even like, yeah. a little cash register guy. That's yeah, cool. Hildeberg is uh, one of the f- one of the forms of the boss. That's yeah. a flying blimp that looks like Betty Boop. Right. Oh yeah, that's all the bosses for that's the most part. Cool. That's smart, yeah. The sl- man. Whenever they do stuff like that. Oh, what is this? Are these plushies? Yeah. Oh yeah, they sell plushies. Funko now does as well. Yeah, but are they Cuphead plushies? They've got a uh, Cuphead Mugman plush, yeah. Kimberly, go away. You don't. <laughs> She's in chat. Yeah, I saw that. Oh, are these plush? I might need these. Yes, they are plushies. Holy crap. Yeah. Wow. F- I, dude, I Funko think... might be one of the smartest companies around right now you know it's it's really weird to me like the vinyl figure thing of like how big it blew up in japan and how this company kind of popularized like stole that stole those toys and kind of like remade them they're cheap I, and then yeah because vinyls it's pvc i mean yeah it's, it's but, the I cheapest mean, material you can use, pretty much. They're cheap, but they're also like they're really they feel like they're well made. Well, because they're they're low detail. Uh, like, yeah, yeah, but I mean also like I got a Kevin Owens, he's a wrestler. It's low detail, like as far as his face goes, but they have his exact t shirt, his shorts he wears, his, the tape he has on his hands, like they nail certain details. Yeah, they hit the they hit the right details to stick yeah. out. Yeah, and I, keep I feel the like they hit details simple. Right. Well, I feel like they get like the cooler details and stuff, which again is smart. Like Jeremy, who's been on the podcast, he has billions of the fucking things. <laughs> yeah. They're they're cool. They got Funko vehicles and they have plushies now and. <sighs> This is oh my god, I just games. scrolled down and saw that they sell the Cuphead Mugman 2-pack in the black and white. Really? Dude, I I kind of like think on my next day off, I'm going to try to unlock black and white mode and do a run of black and white mode on Cuphead and then potentially kill myself. Because <laughs> <laughs> that shit's hard, man. Wow. Like, that, that shit is rage. Nothing but rage. Yeah, I think you're not allowed to buy these black and white ones unless you've beat Cuphead. Yeah. So Tim can buy them. <laughs> I say so yeah, I, I beat that fucker in one sitting, five hours. I appreciate Cuphead a lot. I don't ever want to play through it. That being uh, said, it- holy shit, it just dawned on me. My brother is in town, and my brother is the one who used to play games like that with me. We might need to sit down and play it. Yeah, <laughs> two, two players. It's, it's a Play Anywhere title, so you get on Windows or Xbox. Yeah, I just take my Xbox somewhere with meet them. That, that would probably be a good let's play. Yeah, I I just can't wait. Like, I'm, I'm kind of happy with how crazy the rest of the year is going to be for games. That the Cuphead DLC and the last DLC for Shovel Knight are next year. Just like, hey, give me a break. I don't, I don't need more hard side scrolling games in my life right now. I like, really, <laughs> I need Shovel Knight to go on sale for cheap because that's a game I really want to try, but I don't want to spend a lot of money on because I might not like it. Yeah, I mean, it's, I need it it's to go on Game based. Pass. That's what I need. No, I I don't think it will because no? they they sell uh the treasure trove now. Yeah, it's that a comes reasonable with the for DLC. Me. It's like thirty bucks. 
It's 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 on it's twenty regularly. I've seen it, you know, fifteen dollars before. I was listening to a podcast and there the guy was like, I don't understand why they turned Shovel Knight into a card game. Like what what? <laughs> like, yeah, I guess one of the new I think this is an older podcast, one of them has something to do with like cards. Well, there's the the final DLC is the King of Cards. Okay. Uh he's you know one of the one of the boss he's one of the bosses in the game, one of the evil group of other knights like Shovel well there's Spectre Knight, Plague Knight, Metal Knight, um all all the other guys. Metal Knight, really like Meta Knight. <laughs> Dude, we're not talking about Kirby again. No, we're not. Sock I can only cry so much. <laughs> the dangerous topic on this podcast. <laughs> but uh yeah, so the King of Cars DLC, I think they have like a weird mode because that DLC is also adding like a kind of Smash Brothers like brawl mode, like oh, that's PvP. Right. Yeah, and, I might uh, if I, so if I get treasure trove, will I get that? Yeah, the treasure trove has the whole like kit. Isn't it like twenty five or thirty bucks? Yeah, normally I think it's thirty. If that but goes on talking... sale for like twenty bucks, I might just get it. Yeah, because you got to think like each one of the DLCs is essentially an entirely new campaign. Yeah, where you play as a different character. Like I Plague see... Knight. Yeah, go ahead. Plague, Plague Knight was like the first one out, and a lot of people didn't like the way Plague Knight played, which I didn't finish Plague Knight. Uh. Specter Knight, he kind of like has this weird like skateboarding kind of stuff because he grinds on like his on his scythe through some areas. Like they add whole new mechanics and they remix the levels to work to be for that character's abilities. Right. So uh, when they add the King of Cards, you play as you know King Knight. Like I uh, see how the game works and whatnot. I think I would enjoy it enough because it doesn't look like it's a crazy hard platformer. Well, there there's spots that get hard, but sure. like the game, the game has this cool feature of there's like checkpoints in the levels, and kind of like you know like Dark Souls, if you die, there's just your your bags of money floating in the air. Okay, so you can backtrack and grab your money, like the points and stuff you've collected through the level. Or you know you can just leave them behind and you know lose some, lose some cash. But at the checkpoints, if you want to make the level harder, you can dig up the checkpoint and then skip it. Right. So like, it's kind of like part of one of the ways to unlock some stuff. Like at that point right there, that weird like crystal ball inside of a set of wings as a checkpoint like you get some loot if you dig up the checkpoint yeah but then you gotta start you know a whole another level back okay yeah now that but, i'm uh, watching it i do i do want to play this dude the music's so fucking great uh jake kaufman he usually goes by vert was like his username on all these like forums before he became like a professional kind of like musician yeah like uh the music like the thing i'm so I'm most excited about with King of Cards is oh more 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 music. Like there's whole new compositions they're adding in on the King of Cards DLC. And I was like, yes, please give it to me. Yeah, Spectre Knight does look totally different. Spectre Knight looks cool. Yeah, people really like Spectre Knight. Like I said, Plague Knight's cool, but like his whole like weapon is throwing bombs. Okay. So you don't have like a super close like attack. Oh. So you kind of had to learn how to replay like a lot of the That's basic combat. I but I like, do like. I almost feel like this is Ghosts and Goblins was split up into different characters. Uh, kind of. This is sort of like you know Castlevania Ghosts and Goblins yeah. style, like running around. But with Mega Man type bosses. Hey, honestly, Spectre Knight looks like more of my jam than Shovel Knight. This looks pretty cool. The cool thing to me about uh the brawl mode they're adding 
is Shield Knight is a playable character. The the sorceress, the boss, she's a playable character. Hmm. Like all these people that you don't have a chance to play as, you can now use in the Inspector Knight as well. Uh yeah, like all the all the knights uh like the Black Knight, Shovel Knight, huh. Spectre Knight, Plague Knight, Shield Knight, everybody. Cool. Yeah, I remember playable. reading like uh Shovel Knight is adding like a brawl mode. No one asked for it, but okay. <laughs> yeah. Also, uh in the PS4 version of this, I had uh, you fight Kratos is a hidden boss. What? In the Xbox version, the hidden level is Battletoads. That is ridiculous. I've that thought about sad. buying this game on Xbox just what? to do the Battletoads level. Nothing on uh, Switch? Uh, I think they have some Mario or Nintendo stuff mixed in there. Holy shit, it has Kratos. Yeah, dude, the the Kratos fight is cool. Can you imagine like being the first person to fight this and go, uh? <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, they announced it like before oh, it came okay. out. Like this was a known thing as part of the marketing. Like if you look up the uh, Battletoads level, it's yeah. actually like way cooler than the Kratos thing, honestly, because it's kind of a Battletoads level. Because oh, I think it, shit. I think it even has like the fucking hover bike shit. Isn't Battletoads coming out on that Genesis collection? Uh, I Battletoads may be in that collection, and they announced they're making a new Battletoads that yeah. they just showed like a logo and made some noises. Battletoads was a game I never played a lot of. Oh really? I yeah. I beat them all, man. Very like. The weird like hover bike thing here, and uh, Beavis and Butthead, the video game. Okay, that's the right term. Uh, well, no, like it's not because you see this shit of dodging the objects. Yeah, and like you had to jump certain things. So in the Beavis and Butthead game, where like the whole pl- premise is. Like you, like the two guys got somebody together to buy tickets to a Guar concert, what? and then they got cut up in a fucking like lawnmower. So you're, it's a, it's like kind of like a side scrolling like adventure game where you're hunting down yeah. like the individual pieces to the tickets for the for the Guar concert. But there's is it really a level a Guar concert. Yeah, like Guar is in the thing, and you go to a Guar concert, and you see like. Fucking Sega Genesis representations of the Guar outfits they had at that time in the early nineties. But uh there's a there's a part of the game where you go into like an old folks home. Yeah. And, <laughs> and one of the pieces of the ticket is like under this like fat guy in his underwear wearing a cowboy hat. He's like sleeping. And you gotta do something to wake him up. Oh, Guar concert in the background. Yeah, but uh, as you run away from this guy, he's like chasing you. You're like riding a scooter, and the guy's chasing you in his underwear, wearing his cowboy hat, and like you're like dodging, like gurneys and stuff like that, to the point to where you get to the end, and you ride down the stairs, and the old fat guy in his underwear, wearing the cowboy hat, like falls down the stairs and is in severe pain. <laughs> Like you, just, you see a crumpled mess at the bottom of the stairs, and just walk out. Like, all right, bros. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, I'm not a nostalgia guy, but Super Nintendo had some of the best looking shit. This looks awesome. Yeah, dude, it was great. I remember, like, buying the cartridge for this with like some cash I had. And it was like 80 bucks. I remember playing this, but I think I was too young to understand anything happening. Dude, it was hard. Like, cause it yeah. was like so obtuse. It was like a straight up old school, like adventure game. And you had to like go into like the sewers to find shit. You had to do all this weird stuff to find the individual like ticket pieces. <laughs> you had to get like the frog ball bat to b- break shit. That's the, 
the baseball bat with a glove on it. Yeah. Had to combine all this stuff together. Like, but anyway, like straight up from Battletoads, they had that that escape scene of running from somebody. But in the case of Peavis and Butthead, like I said, it's it's a gigantic fat man in his underwear chasing you. <laughs> like it's 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 one of those things where like I thought about it years later. I was like, did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, yeah, Guar's on there. Yeah. Because it was is is also again another one of those weird games, Genesis era Booger Man. Did you ever see or play that? I vaguely remember it. Yeah. Uh, well, Booger Man had this whole thing of where you needed to like find uh, like plungers, where like you throw plungers at walls to stick, and they'd be like your like way to platform up. But there was literally piles of shit on the ground. You could dig through to find plungers. Don't ask me why. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't think I ever played this. Yeah, it, it it was it was interesting. What in the fuck? Yeah. Did we talk about the Genesis collection in the last podcast? Uh no, we did not. I'm excited about that. I'm gonna get that. Well, I think in the Discord I had mentioned like the Steam version that's been out for a couple years. Yeah, but it's not has a larger selection. <laughs> Than the one that's coming out on Steam. On Switch. Or yeah, the one on Steam has more than the one that'll be on Switch. Yeah, I I like don't give a shit about buying games for my PC anymore. Yeah. <laughs> uh let's see. Yeah, that's Sega Genesis arrived on Switch this winter. Uh over fifty classic Sega games. Holy shit. Yeah. There's a lot in there. For the collection. Yeah, like for me... The fact that they have all four of the fantasy stars is pretty crazy. Yeah, because those are like really long games, aren't they? Yeah, Fantasy Star 4 is like one of the, like the OG like 50 to 100 hour RPGs I've played in my life. Because this is the thing for me. It looks like, according to this IGN article, there's some games that aren't even announced yet. There's like empty lines. I don't know. But for me, like, what are some of these games? So, Comic Zone, Mean Bean Machine, three Golden Axe games? Are you fucking serious? I've never yeah, played I'll, Fantasy I'll, Star. Fantasy Star 4 is the only one I would recommend playing. Because it's the, like the, clo- the closest to like a standard RPG, kind of like the SNES, like, Final Fantasies. Right. Like, it actually looks beautiful. Like, I love the art style in uh, Fantasy Star 4. Oh, I see what I'm looking at. So, they had Sonic's Ultimate in 2009, Flashback Console in 2017, and then this version is coming out. Yeah. Okay, yeah. You, um, you, mm-hmm. I was going to say, you know what's funny about the Flashback Console? So, like, that... Brazilian company that's been making all those like Sega Genesis like yeah. plug into your TV systems. So they still make Mega Drives and Mega Drive games in Brazil. Like it's still like super popular there because of like importing and taxes and prices. Right. So a lot of the games, like when you see like the box, those things, like you walk in like like Walgreens or Walmart, and you see those little plug-in boxes for Sega Genesis games. It says, yeah, 200 games. Like, 80 of those are straight-up bootlegs. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Like, ROM hacks and bootlegs from, like, Brazil that are barely translated into English. Yeah, there's a lot of games on here. Like, all the Sonic games. Uh, Okay, this list is really confusing. Aren't all the Sonic games in this one? Yeah. I'm not sure. I mean, it could be Sonic 1 through 3. Oh, okay. I see them now. Uh, Streets of Rage 1 through 3? Yeah, Hell 1 through yes. 3 are in there. Uh, Shining Force is supposed to be really good. I can't remember what that is. Yeah, Gunstar Heroes. Gunstar Heroes. Fuck yes. We were talking about that like last week, the week before. Toe Jam and a Roll. Virtual Fighter. And for me... I want to play goddamn Vector Man again. 
I yeah, love Vector, Vector, Vector Man. Was Man. So cool. It's such a weird game. It's just it's so like, damn good. It's, it's just like this weird wire cutout guy, but it's a cool like contra shooter. Yeah. For me, it felt like the perfect combination of like Mega Man and a easier platformer. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love Vector Man. I loved the sounds in this game. Lair, that sounds familiar. It's just Lair? I don't know. Um, I think Monster Boy is also on here. Yeah, the original Monster Boy. Yeah, Comic Zone. I love Comic Zone. Uh, I'm sure there's like, and again, I was never a Sega, a Sega guy. So there's probably a shitload of stuff on here that's oh, yeah, amazing the, that I don't even know was amazing. Yeah, like I I was always a Sega guy. Like I missed out on a vast majority of the entirety of Nintendo. Yeah. Like See, anything pretty much Super Nintendo or GameCube or Wii U, I missed out on. And now, at the same time, I feel like... So, we're getting these Genesis classics. Should we not now get fucking SNES classics, please? Well, yeah, it'd be nice. Uh, talking about classics, that Capcom beat up bundle that came out. Oh, yeah. What is, happened with that? Apparently, that's hot garbage online. <laughs> well, the Switch version has real troubles with it online. Like the... PS4, Xbox One, and PC versions work a little bit better. But it's, you know, just a raw peer-to-peer connection to play that collection online. The games work well. They play well. And, you know, they're those games. Yeah. But yeah, the the online functionality is a, a hot mess currently on Switch by all reports I've seen. Damn. But that's to be expected because <laughs> switching online is yeah. All, all, always questionable at best. Well, we'll talk about the online thing in a minute. Um, because we went off on a fucking tangent. I don't even know where we are anymore. <laughs> yeah, I mean, once Funko Pops happened, I knew it was off the rails. Off the rails. Uh, but I, I do want to talk about a game that I actually, I guess, like, technically beat, like, a couple weeks ago. Uh, One Strike. Have you seen this on the Switch? It's, like, a dollar. I was scrolling through the Switch a second ago before we started looking at like some of the sale prices on games, but no, I had not seen one strike. So it's I think it's two ninety nine, but it keeps going on sale for a dollar. And there's a game out there, I can't think of what it's called, but it's it's a fighting game where you also like jumping around and trying to kick each other. Um Oh my god, it's kick something. Dive kick? Dive kick, thank you. Yeah. This is essentially, I don't even want to say a more strategic dive kick, but this is very similar to dive kick. Whereas, you know. This is dive kick Bushido Blade. Yeah. Because, like, so the the ninja chick on screen, she can kind of do this, like, dodge roll thing. You, 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 yeah. I can't think today. <laughs> the controls are really simple. Move forward and backwards. Dash. And then I think everyone can guard. Not everyone can dash, I think. And then, like, attack. Uh, but she, like, she, when she attacks, she, like, rolls and stabs. Uh, but I think her guard isn't very good. I think her her guard might be short or something like that. And then there's some characters, like, I believe the guy she's fighting, who can kind of guard indefinitely. I'm trying to remember which character that is. He might have just a very basic strike, but it's pretty quick and it's got a good arc. Um, but there's a variety of characters in the game, and they yeah, all strike like differently eight on the screen. A so, like ago. the female, she has a very short blade, but she strikes twice, so it's like a short strike and then a much longer strike. Um, there's one guy that is actually one of my favorites. See if I can find him. Uh, the, on the left, he has like a Naganata. And he does like a capoeira kind of like flip kick stab thing. 
But he can also dash backwards, and when he does that, he slashes, and you can kill somebody that way. So, it, it's a very, very simple fighting game, but it is so satisfying. It is such a game of chess. Like, it is yeah, so I mean, it, damn it, cool. It's like a original, like, Yi Ar Kung Fu version of, like, um, Nidhogg. Yeah. Like, Nidhogg feels so good when you just screw somebody Absolutely. over. Absolutely. I think he just did the... You see, when he goes backwards, yep. So he's actually still striking, even though he's dashing backwards. So if they come at you, you can just be like, fucking nope! And, <laughs> and you still kill them. You um, just be like, not today. Pretty much. Uh, there's one character that has a chain she can throw. I think it's a she. Yeah. Um, one, one guy says a basic samurai. He's the basic bitch. And we got all the characters on screen. Oh, we got a bunch. Yeah, but they have like team duels and stuff like that and different difficulties. And I I spent a dollar on it and I got a good, I would say, three hours out of it. I'm going to play it like more because it's like kind of a mindless game, but it's just kind of relaxing. Yeah, just uh, slicing slicing mofos up. <laughs> so I would highly recommend it, especially for a dollar. I got like three hours out of it. That's pretty good for a dollar. Yeah, hell, that's better than a red box rental. <laughs> oh fuck, red box rentals, man, they're expensive. It's like three something a day. Just go buy it. I did get from Red Box. I don't even think I've told you this yet. I got Dishonored two for five bucks. I bought it. Yeah, like. I bought a, the most recent Deus Ex for like $6 out of the red box. Why is that game so cheap, Deus Ex? Because it failed miserably financially. Damn. And it's on the back burner. That's why that studio made Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which we'll talk about later. We'll talk about it right now. <laughs> oh, you want to talk about it now? Okay. Yeah. So uh, you, your glowing review of Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Ah, man, it it, it, it hurts. I started just, playing Rise, by the way, and like I can't get back into it. Yeah, like 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 Rise. So Crystal Dynamics made one and two, and the first game makes sense. It's a killer be killed survival game. Like it makes sense. The first why one. this woman? Yeah, yeah, is hunting these people down because if she doesn't, it's her tense, friends are gonna die. Yeah, that's a she's gonna be game. killed. Yeah, like it, it's 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 got its problems, like some real bad plot issues and like weird, like massive fucking injuries this lady goes through. Yeah. Like, ma'am, you just had a giant piece of rebar stab you in your uterus. Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like you had a giant rebar wound in your uterus, and then you fell into a muddy river. <laughs> you did not clean that wound. Nothing right. good happened here. But yeah, and then she, like multiple times, Lara Croft gets impaled in that first game, like twice, like all the way through, just straight up, like, like how are you still moving, let alone traversing giant cliff faces without getting tired? But uh, yeah, Rise kind of went weird because I love the the aesthetic, I love the locations of like the kind of desert areas, and then going deep into the mountains of like Siberia. And then all the crazy snowy stuff. But again, the the story parts just fucking fall apart real fast and rise of the tomb raider. Yeah. Like, like you uh spoilers for the first tomb raider, you find out that this Trinity organization that's been hunting you down on this island are also the people responsible for the death of your father. Right. So then, essentially, game two and three in the series are selfish revenge plots <laughs> where you're just hunting and down and murking fools. You're just mercilessly killing people. Yeah, like, and the guys that definitely don't have families. Yeah, clearly. This, this, this organization people come into, well, there's probably like generations of people in this organization because it's been around for a while. Like, <laughs> the, clearly none of these people 
have ever been involved with anybody else. But yeah, like like Rise had like some really cool game choices and some really fun stuff, but it kind of doubled down on like the weird uh like Metroid style gating. Right. I talked about this on like the Discord of like late game in Rise, you get this thing called the rope ascender, which is like the motorized tool to let you like zip line back up on a rope instead of like going down. Like if you have like a zip line and you don't want to like slowly crawl all the way back. You jump on when you have that. I think I have it just that. lets you zoop, yeah. go all the way back up. Now, what the thing it also does is let you like see these reinforce piles of wood <laughs> that have a piece of rope on the front that you can't pull down normally with your rope arrow. Now you need the extra muscle, the rope ascender to pull down, which right. is really fucking stupid. Because you have fire arrows that burn down other things that are made out of wood. So why the fuck am I not just shooting fire arrows? <laughs> but anyway, that that's you know just weird game logic. The thing that drives me crazy about Shadow is the rope ascenders in that game. But you it's completely unnecessary. Like it's ancillary. I never found a way to use it for its intended purpose of going back up a rope. And there's like three or four doors I found where you use it to open. Right. You only find it at a merchant late game. It's not even like part of the, you get it in part of the story. Like it's one of those, ooh, <laughs> I forgot I died there right through the chest pipe. But uh, yeah, you, you, like in Rise, you get it as part of the story. Like you find it on a dead guy you kill or something. And then right. you use it repeatedly for multiple things. They just, I guess, had to have some content for the game. So they just left it in for no reason for Shadow. <laughs> and then you use it like four times. It costs you like a couple thousand gold or whatever the currency was again in this game. And it's just like Shadow literally is in the shadow of the other fucking games in this franchise. Because it's a different studio. The guys who made, you know, the Deus Ex game. Because Crystal Dynamics is working on something else now. And I guess they were just given, like, the raw assets for everything. Right. And told, hey, we need, a, we need a new game before this date in 2018. And we're and not going to tell they, anyone about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, we're, we're going to tell a lot of people about it. And then everyone's going to forget because it looks uninteresting. And come out at a bad time right after Spider Man and all these other cool games people want. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's just like there's so many weird things of like like the animations recycle for no reason. It's like yeah. um like one of the collectibles you hunt down to just get resources for crafting is like you find gold or jade, like in like or veins like you know skyrim like you're just getting yeah. your pickaxe out and digging yeah. shit out but every time you go to you know mine that thing it's the same press square three times and see the exact same phases of the animation for each press of square like all right overhand 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 pickaxe put my foot on the wall and pull it back out now i got the thing like it's it's just this harsh rehash of the exact same animations they've had in all the other games, like, like, oh, hey, do I need to break the limbs off this tree to get wood to build my arrows. Snap the top limbs, snap the middle limbs, grab the bottom limbs, pull them towards me. Done. Like, <laughs> every single time you, gr- you break tr- tree branches off, it's the same animation every time. It's just a whole lot of mediocre. It's just arbitrary. Let alone, this is the exact point in the story here. With Lara Croft, you know, she's reckless. Yeah. She's out to stop the world. Out to stop the world, though. She doesn't know. Yeah, it's like she, she started the apocalypse because she didn't understand what the fuck she was doing. She just didn't want the bad guys, quote unquote, to win. So now she's like, Jonah, we got to go. We got to stop them. And Jonah's sitting here looking at like all this shit. Like, bitch, people died. Like, <laughs> like there's people here that need us. You're not the only one, you selfish dumb bitch. Like, like 
I act like I got really annoyed late game at Rise of the Tomb Raider, Lara Croft, because her as a character just falls apart and it's really bad character choices. Yeah. Jonah is this weird character. Like he's a good character. I love Jonah. Like he's well written. He's well made. In this game, like his whole idea is that he was like the cook on the the boat yeah. when he crashed in the first game, and he's just like involved in that crew. And like I don't ever remember him from the first game, but apparently that's what he was. He's you know Samoan Steven Seagal. I'm just a cook. <laughs> <laughs> but uh. So apparently, like he's like just Lara's bro, like just straight up, hey, we're buddies, because he's in the beginning of Rise of the Tomb Raider, and they start having this conversation, like, who the fuck's this guy? Like, <laughs> yeah. So I, I played Rise of the Tomb Raider not too far after the original Tomb Raider. Right. I don't know if you remember, but like, I'm not sure how far I am in Rise. I just got to the point where I think Jonah's hurt. And Jacob's taking him to heal him, I guess. And he just revealed who he is. Jacob did. Yeah. Like, who he actually is. And I'm, I'm like, how far am I towards the end? It's been so long. Yeah. And I think, again, kind of like last uh, I think many characters outside you're breaking up. <laughs> uh, have you been to? I'm losing you. Hello. Oh, did I lose you? You see, like the giant, like weird cube dome shape thing in satellite dishes. Cube but, like you know like in GoldenEye like when you come in and you see like the giant radar dishes in the level oh you know what GoldenEye. I just looked it up I'm like really far in yeah like I know you're pretty far in but like Rise of the Tomb Raider especially just felt like it kept going for no reason towards the end of it like I, I remember that game really dragging out yeah so I looked it up on IGN and I'm like, I'm on the level before the last. I okay. might just play through it. And then one day when I forget how you feel about shadow, I'll play shadow. <laughs> yeah. Like, 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 like it's, it's well made, but it's just meh. I, it's like the, that line going to haunt great. me where she's like, they're going to remake the world. What are they going to make it into? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's so much of it is like... Bitch, like what? The, <laughs> like, you're the person that's supposed to know shit. And you just started the apocalypse, and now you're confused. But you're saying we need to chase these guys anyway. Like, what? Can we get an alternate ending for Shadow where she just, like... She fucks up, and they get the dagger in the box, and they're like, world peace, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, because, you know, oddly enough, that's kind of what the bad guy wants. But he just kind of, like, so... He's bad at expressing himself? <laughs> well, well, no, like, he, he's very exclusionary with who he wants to still be alive mm. afterwards. Like, it's, it's, it's kind of like a Thanos snap situation. Is it, like, specific races of people, or...? No, it's just, hey, like... So, so like... It, it would get kind of spoilery. But okay, it's not go like, ahead. Spoilers for Shadow. It, it's, it's not super important, but it... So, okay. The guy, Dominguez, I want to say, who's, you know, the head of this Trinity organization... He's a native of the city of Paititi, this hidden like Mayan village in Peru. And it's a big part of where you spend the game is in this big area helping these people. Um, I'm not one to talk about cultural appropriation and like whitewashing, but you do just kind of show up and you're the magical white lady that solves the brown people's problems. 
<laughs> like it's it's aggressively annoying. Like the like the outfits you craft, yeah, are using like animal skins and feathers and stuff like that. For like you're wearing this dumb shit. There's an outfit that literally has like bird feather wings on the back as like a cape. And they like give you like these bonuses, but you just look like a fucking asshole. Like <laughs> somebody it was just, just gets... talking about that on a show. Like, like they want to be able. To... Oh, maybe it was you that like they were talking about how uh, you can have like the effects from certain. No, it wasn't you. Uh, they you can have the effects in Spider Man. Like once you unlock the suits, you get the effects. And you can use them with other suits. Like you can find a suit you like and use the effect yeah, of a the, different suit. The 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 suits don't matter. They're cosmetic. The special power you unlock, yeah, can be swapped out for anybody. So like yeah. the web blossom, which is like the most OP thing in the game, you get with like the classic Spider Man suit, the one you start the game in that gets destroyed a little bit. Right. Like you get the ability to repair it, and then you get a fresh one that's not damaged. And yeah, any of those powers you unlock, you can just swap those out. So when your meter charges, you can pop out that special power. But uh, going back to like Dominguez, like the guy here that runs the Trinity organization, like you've never known this guy until the last game. He's like the the evil bad guy that runs this organization. And he's just kind of like a whiny bitch by the end of it. Huh. It's like like all he wants is to keep people out of his city. Like he okay. killed your dad because your dad was going to tell everybody this, you know, hidden city of gold or whatever. This, this ancient civilization that's been hiding in this jungle city that no one knows about is still there. He's going to tell it to the world and people are going to go there and fuck it all up. Sure. He's like, I don't, I don't want my place getting gentrified. <laughs> He's trying to end the world with this magic to stop gentrification. <laughs> essentially right. i mean yeah i kind of get it. It, it but uh so like he he's the guy that looks at you when you grab the dagger and he's like the lara croft blah 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 i was like you know i just never thought you would have taken it talking about the dagger because he knows you just started some shit and he's mad at you he's like god damn it woman we got to figure this shit out fast or else everybody's gonna die because of you like <laughs> So but, at that uh, point, does Trinity continue to try and kill her? Yeah, they're still in these jungles because you're trying to find the box they're talking about. Because you've got to insert the dagger into the box to get the special powers to remake the world. Okay. But uh, that's where, like, I don't know how Jonah knows you just started the fucking apocalypse, then follows you into the fucking jungles now. Like, what? Yeah. And then he's he's here with you doing all this stuff. Like somehow people in the jungles of like Peru know who Lara Croft is as an adventurer. Which is weird to me. Of course. Um the weird thing is, like in the options, it's a cool thing. You can turn the audio to immersive audio, which basically has the people from these different areas speak in their native language. But then cool. Lara Croft speaks to them in English and they understand and respond back and like oh god <laughs> like like ancient Mayan or whatever. And you're like, oh, this is just fucking weird. But I played the entire game like that just because I wanted to feel I just wanted to see how dumb this felt every single time. Yeah. Cause then random other situations, the people only speak English and like the big story important cutscenes. But yeah, like I don't know, like some of the dialogue between characters is really well well written. Especially when like Lara and Jonah are just being like buddies and talking. Yeah. But then the whole time I'm like, Jonah is literally the definition of Stockholm syndrome. Like yeah, this woman sounds like it. does nothing but almost get him killed and throw him into terrible situations, but he still shows up and supports her for no discernible reason. Cause he's not trying to fuck her. He fucks this other girl. In this game, he, he he meets a lady in the jungles of Peru and hooks up with her. So it's not even like, it's just like a friendship that only almost gets Jonah killed repeatedly, has gotten multiple people Lara Croft knows killed in the past. 
<laughs> she killed hundreds of people in a Mexican village like a couple of days ago <laughs> when you were in yeah. Mexico and she started the fucking apocalypse. It's like it also doesn't help that, you know, you, you can obviously see, you know, the absence of that Microsoft money. Oh, really? Be- because Rise of the Tomb Raider, for all the problems I had with it towards the end, it was highly polished because they had that one year exclusivity. They had that little bit of extra Microsoft budget. Hmm. There are some weird, like, dirt face moments of, like, the mouse not moving and some of the some of the non story cutscene points. There are weird uh, bugs every now and then that pop up of like people doing weird shit in the middle of the cutscene. Yeah. Uh, the lighting when it works looks amazing, but then sometimes it's just hideous. You can't see a fucking thing. Like multiple people have this issue of like like they can't. Can't seem to get it right to where it looks good in all conditions. <laughs> like nobody can figure out the lighting system in this game to not even be like way too bright or way too dark. Cause this game does the annoying thing of like transitioning from light to dark, like your eyes would, where your eyes yeah. have to adjust. Which fucking bothers me. It's like chromatic aberration. It's like <laughs> what do you mean you're having lens f- flare and chromatic aberration? It's like my eyeballs aren't a fucking camera. <laughs> you know, like, like if you want me to be playing from the perspective of this character, why are you throwing in this bullshit yeah. for minor visual aesthetic? Yeah, that's and in this, studios do shit like that. Yeah, and in this case, with the, the way the lighting works, when it works, it pops. It's amazing. Like, the scenery and the world design is great. It's just... It's a very average game in the middle of all of it mm-hmm. with a fucking terrible main character that they're going to have to reboot. I hope so. Cause like for how much I love that first game, it's like, I would never spend another fucking dime on another one of the games in the series. Well, I guess maybe it uh, might be too much of a spoiler. Okay. Minor spoiler for a second. Is it possible that at the end of this game she realizes how much of a fuck up she is? Uh, sort of. Yeah. But so she kind of like she survives through this. So like when I say she sacrifices herself for the greater good, she just kind of says, "Hey, yeah, I'm gonna do this to help you guys." Like you caused all this. Like <laughs> you don't get to feel good about you know, sacrificing yourself to save these people. These people wouldn't be in this fucking situation if you didn't pick up the fucking dagger, you fucking psychopath with daddy issues. Like fuck this eel, by the way. Oh yeah, the eel. Oh my god, that gave oh. me the heebie jeebies. Also, this game has awful underwater stealth moments. So there are this game areas I went through that shit with Rise. Yeah. So this game adds piranhas. Oh no. Now the eels you can do like the quick time event to save your own butt cheeks. The piranhas just eat you. Like if the piranhas find you, they just kill you. If they find you, so, like, they just gotta, automatically like, find you. Well no, there's like so like you know how on the ground you can hide in bushes from enemies? Yeah. You swim into and hide in underwater bushes from the piranhas. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I'm making that up. That's the mechanic they put into this fucking game. Jesus. Yeah, I just I was playing Rise. There's a level where you're in like a big ice room, and there's certain there's holes in the ice room, and there's like a bunch of dudes above the ice. Every fucking time I came up out of the water, like there she is. Like how do you fuckers know I'm gonna try this hole? There she is. Fuck. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it's it's just like the. I can't even say, you know, blame Idos Montreal for this game or Square Enix Montreal. I, I forget what their studio name is now. It because they were given the toy they they were forced to play with somebody else's toys. Yeah. So there's a lot of these bad decisions and a lot of these mechanics that the, you know they had that people expected for this game and they probably didn't have the time and budget to try to replace them. 
thus why the rope ascender is in the game and means absolutely nothing other than hiding a couple of doors for some quests. Um, it's really fucking stupid to me that certain areas like the doors that are boarded up have like a little bit of fucking sheet metal on them and you gotta shoot them with a shotgun. But I can like make goddamn explosives out of gas cans with a piece of cloth. Yeah. Or again, like all the different wood doors that are just varying degrees of more boards, less boards, or some fucking like cloth stuck on it. The cloth ones are the ones you burn with arrows. But all of these would be set on fire very easily with the Molotov cocktails I can build yeah. out of glass bottles and cloth or, you know, just the arrows that set things on fire. Like, like so much of this shit is just so like video game ass video game shit. Yeah, I don't like that anymore, though. Like, I like I prefer things to be a little more like collect salvage to sharpen knife. What the fuck does that even mean? Go find a yeah. rock, dumbass. Yeah, and I need three pieces of whatever these loose pieces of metal or whatever the salvage would be to be part of the... Well, in this case, I think she crafts a handle for it, but you've already got the wood, yeah. and you've already got hide. Like, you can make some strips of leather and, <laughs> and make a wood handle, but I don't know. Like, it's... So much of this game is just arbitrary nonsense. But I feel like they could have put in, like, real survival like they could have called goddamn bear grills but like how would you make a knife he'd be like well i'd find three pieces of salvage <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'd i'd take a broken piece of a plane propeller and sharpen it with some salvage at a campfire <laughs> uh yeah i don't get it it's just yeah it's it's weird <sighs> It's just unfortunate, man. Like, like this game could have been good, but oh, they were already oh, trying old to... Old Tomb Raider yeah. skins. Oh, the old Tomb Raider skin, yeah. I played for a while with that, like, after I finished the game. And seeing, like, the, the bomber jacket one from the start of the original Tomb Raider where you're dodging the wolves outside of the temple in Tibet. Yeah. That's pretty Fuck cool. Fuck those wolves. But yeah, so, you unlock those extra skins for having played the previous Tomb Raiders. That looks like one piece of salvage to me. <laughs> Which would make sense. That would make sense if it was like, find salvage. Now find a uh, tape of some kind. Now find cloth. Okay, now you're going to use that tape and that cloth to make uh, a knife out of the salvage. Now find a rock to, to sharpen the knife. Like That's more interesting to me than find three pieces of salvage. Yeah. Because then you feel like, like, oh shit, is that how you would do that? You find a piece of metal and you wrap it in cloth and tape. All right, that makes sense. But no, we're just going to go with yeah. random video game shit. You know, like, I, I'm not one to believe in, like, scores, but I was scrolling through Reddit, and I saw, like, uh, the PS4 subreddit had, like, a mega thread of people talking about their impressions for it. They do yeah. this, like, all the time when a new game comes out, and everyone just throws their, you know, opinions in there. And I saw the guy, like, his... He just listed, like, his ratings of the game. He's like, all right, original Tomb Raider 8... Rise a six and shadow a five. And I was like, I agree with that. And like, <laughs> like, I, Damn. like, like, that's that, that's, it's, it's harsh, but I mean, like, other than the presentation and like the fun of exploring and like Rise of the Tomb Raider, the characters are fucking trash. The motivations are stupid. Yeah. Like, I hate that Lara Croft, every time she starts to say something like, you know, saying no to something, she shakes her head back and forth. So you see the hair effects. It's like, <laughs> like I'm, like who fucking shakes their whole neck and head around like that to say no? Like it's it's a repeat right. thing that I noticed it. Jeez. Um. Also, like the thing that bugs me is that they added it in Rise of like anytime she gets out of like the water, mm -hmm. she like reaches back and kind of like cinches her hair back up in, like the ponytail. 
I think so. That's in this game. Okay, too, yeah, but... you said that was in Rise. Yeah, I re- okay. So the whole thing to me is like, why the fuck would you cut your hair if this is a big issue for you to keep doing this yeah. every fucking time you get out of the water? Just have a different haircut, goddamn it! Like, like <laughs> it's just so stupid. Like, there's so many arbitrary things right. that bug the ever loving fuck out of me about this game. Yeah, things that would have been fine way back in the day that are kind of unacceptable now, I guess. Yeah, because like the thing I tried to tell somebody is like when the first Tomb Raider came out, it was like this real dark, serious kind of take on the Uncharted formula, and it it you know had some rough edges that first Tomb Raider, but I really liked what they were doing, and then they just fucking shit the bed two games in a row. <laughs> I don't know how you follow that game up though, because like that was such an underdog story that whole game, and then I guess where do you go from there other than fucking the world up? Well, the thing is, it's like you could treat it like Die Hard, and the, the what I say about this is John McClane did not seek these situations out. Yeah, these situations found him. Yeah, so. If, you know, they had just had her, like, she's recovered. She's kind of got some PTSD because she killed a lot of fucking people and saw a lot of people die. Then she saw a weird Japanese fucking ghost. Yeah. (laughs) I I mean, you could have her be the archaeologist, the explorer, and then have Trinity still, like, come in and fuck shit up and her having to, you know, react instead of her being the hunter. Yeah. I don't know that you even need Trinity for these games because, like, it's called Tomb Raider. So have her go to some another place like that island, that Japanese island that's like, this place doesn't exist. And she's like, fuck you, it does. And she finds it and goes on this crazy adventure just like one. Like, we don't and need some, this. Go ahead. And then some shady people show up following her because they're trying to steal the loot because they know she finds It doesn't shit. have to be Trinity. It could just be some asshole pirates. Yeah, if they're asshole anybody, pirates, yeah, then like, it's like, I'm okay killing these asshole pirates. That's the that's the beautiful thing about the Uncharted series. Is it's just a different band of greedy fucks all looking for fucking a quick get-rich scheme. Yeah. Like, it's not this so it's weird Indiana Jones organization with yeah. evil plans. It, like they're, I don't know. I just feel like some of these games don't have to have this giant overarching narrative that every game and movie now feels like they have to have. Like some games can just be simple. Some games should have a long narrative thread, you know. Like, I mean, like I, I always go back to this, but. Destiny had a fantastic long thread with Destiny 1, and then when Destiny 2 came out, they're like, well, we're going to forget a lot of that shit. Like, what the fuck? Like, why would you do that? And then games like Terminator are like, we're going to have this really long thing with Trinity, and it's like, why? Like, <laughs> Yeah. All right, I don't also, even feel like they're that interesting of an organization. They're like... No, because they were in the old games. Were they? Yeah. I guess I just don't remember that. Yeah, they 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 were forgettable. But uh no, also kind of kind of talking about a lot of the real dumb plot devices and writing towards the end, especially of Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Mild spoilers, so like like I said, Joan is like the cook. He's yeah. just a guy that's been helping out Lara. It's her it's her friend, you know, but like there's this whole puzzle you're solving about the stations of the cross so like it like it's a traditional painting and story about jesus and like the path of him carrying the cross to the crucifixion to his death to his resurrection anyway so like you're kind of moving statues around and shining mirror lights other places to solve a straight up old school indiana jones puzzle or the witness. but the problem is in this point like Jonah speaks up with some weird fucking stations of the cross knowledge. Like, wasn't he just the fucking cook? Like, yeah. <laughs> where did he get this information in his life? I don't remember anybody just randomly talking about the stations of the cross anywhere in the past here. 
existing knowledge. Also, um, for no reason, towards the end of this game, once uh, Trinity thinks they've won, all of like the organization of Trinity shows up, and they all... They all what? <laughs> like, they all get... Like, so all the head people that run Trinity, once they think, you know, they've won, they all show up to kind of, like, watch their victory. And then they all get killed because shit goes bad for them. <laughs> so, so now Trinity kind of just doesn't exist at the end of this game. So now there's no even, like, continued big bad guy. <laughs> so they just kind of, like, arbitrary. Like, why the fuck would all these guys show up? Because that's why, because so they can kill him off and go with another well, villain. You just hear radio broadcasts of helicopters going down and people reacting to like the, the finale of the game of fighting going on. Like, oh, all the bishops and such are such dead, and blah blah blah. It's like, well, that's convenient, that's a way to wrap it up, I guess. <laughs> just all right. Just exposition of all the bad guys getting killed. It's, it's so bad. This game is so bad. Like, I can't, like, I was just impressed I finished it because it was annoying me so much. Yeah. And I mean, now we've probably talked about it for far too long. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, so you also played Dead Rising, which is a game I have. A bit of experience with. They're really fun games. Is this your first time playing them? No. Well, I I haven't played Dead Rising. I was looking into maybe picking them up and playing them again. Like, I've played all four of the series. Yeah. It's just randomly, I've been thinking a lot about Dead Rising this week. Uh, because I, at work, I was having a random conversation with a guy. He's a big Nintendo fan. And he mentioned Majora's Mask. And that's where I came across the idea that Dead Rising is kind of just Majora's Mask with zombies. Because of the timing aspect? Because, well, you have three days to finish. Now, Majora's Mask, you know, if you don't finish in the three days, the moon crashes into the planet and kills everybody. And Dead Rising, if you don't finish in three days... Uh, the military like bombs the entire town yeah. and kills everybody. Now with uh, Majora's Mask, you play the the Song of Time on your flute and go back three days. In Dead Rising, that's again where I also thought of the next day or so. Dead Rising is a roguelite, and I had never thought about it. Yeah, because your level, your character level, the unlocks you add to the loot of the world transfer over but you know the 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 run ends there uh like you know different like costumes and stuff give you different powers like majora's mask there's all there's all sorts of weird similarities if you had said hey you know majora's mask and dead rising have a lot in common i would have said no you're a fucking idiot (laughs) until i sat and i thought about it i was like yeah wait they actually have comparisons and it's fucking weird but uh, yeah, I was thinking about this, and it's been on my mind because I knew from the point of Dead Rising Three when that game came out, it was an Xbox One launch title. Like I knew as soon as I saw that game and I played it, and I had fun with it, I was like, "Oh no, this studio is going to get closed down." Three wasn't but, nearly know, as good as the other two, and I'm not really sure why. I didn't like the character. That was a big thing for me. I really didn't like that guy. Um, well, I, also, like uh, the thing that probably sticks out to you is that with two, you know, they they kind of started to loosen up with like the rules of the game, and it kind of started to lose a little bit of its identity, but it still kind of stuck a lot closer to the formula. Mm-hmm. Three was just literally no stakes. Hey, go do whatever yeah. you want, whenever you want. That's true. Like there's 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 no risk, no reward. You know, it's just, hey, this is just an open world toy box now full of zombies. And ridiculous shit you can build to run over. But, you know, the biggest issue for me with the Dead Rising franchise is like they try to 
emphasize the zombie killing and the weird, you know, playground stuff. But then the base game of actually controlling it, playing as this character, pretty much never got better. Like it, it like even in Dead Rise, it still kind of plays like shit. Like it's still kind of clunky. Yeah, a lot of stuff works a little bit smoother, but at the end of the day, you're just you know it's it's essentially zombies. <laughs> like there's no risk of you dying unless you really really suck. Yeah. Yeah, the game doesn't look. I'm I'm I got a comparison video up. It doesn't look that much better. No, no, like the the budgets, the time frame, the look of the game because they try to keep so many zombies on screen you know they had to scale down the individual textures yeah i guess it does look better definitely the frames look a lot better yeah the the newer re-release versions on ps4 uh they they have so just hard facts they have like that's never going anywhere else i lost dead for rising a second. dead rising 3 yeah. It's just a hard Xbox One exclusive. Yeah. Like like they published that. Like I believe Xbox published that one. But they re released Dead Rising one and two with all the DLC on the newer consoles. And Dead Rising Four was a one year exclusive for Xbox One. So then they had the Frank's Big pa- Package is the name of the PS4 version. Hmm. The version came with the DLC. And these games, like, I know I I know somebody who absolutely hates them. It's not Bob. Bob hates zombie games. But I got a buddy who just, he hates the whole just killing hordes of zombies thing. Like, like he's saying, like, the gameplay is mindless and stuff. And I don't know. I, that's what I like about it. I like getting all these crazy crafted goofy ass weapons and killing a bunch of zombies. And, like, I think that's exactly what the game is. Well, that's what the game becomes when you level up. Yeah. And the, that's not the beginning. The beginning of this game is actually really fucking hard. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And that's why, you know, the roguelite part comes in. You fail. You're learning the systems. You're learning how things work. And you're also getting better as a character. Like, you're leveling up. You're getting some abilities. I, I know this game being like an old school beat em up just in 3D but then i remember like the fist combos the power moves like you get a move literally towards you know the end of the character tree to where you just rip the intestines out of a zombie you just roll up punch them in the gut pull out their guts <laughs> you can uh, rip rip them in half there's a suplex there's all sorts of like straight up goofy ass like brawler shit from back in the day and uh, Capcom Studio Productions 1 is a studio that had worked on a lot of the beat 'em up games like you would see in that Capcom beat 'em up bundle. So it was weird, you know, thinking about all of these together in this week. But now, unfortunately, uh, Capcom Vancouver is RIP. They're shutting down. And uh, that's just unfortunate. Like I, I had hoped they could have, you know, made better games and everyone. Yeah. But yeah, all of the Dead Rising games steady decline of people liking them. Yeah. Because they do become mindless. Whereas this game, you know, the first Dead Rising and to a large extent, the second game, there's a lot of thought that goes into your run, staying alive, planning out like the time frame of when you can go do yeah. certain characters to get certain items, to do certain rescues for heroes, to fight certain bad guys. And then like three and four are just, all right, here's toys. Go play with them. And go I will build say, a giant. For anyone who kind of wants to try the game, and they're probably just cheap enough now when they go on sale, but they have yeah. those, uh, like those mini episodes in between games that were really good. Yeah. 
the the episodes are included the the remastered pack yeah uh, on game pass they're on game pass version not the remastered version you're cutting out a lot what about the remastered version I was going to say the Dead Rising 2, the 360 version, is on Game Pass. Right. So then, there, there's a lot of options to check these games out. Yeah. I'd, I'd recommend, you know, one and two. Three and four are real hit or miss. I would say two, I think is. I think two is the best one. Well, well, two is the most accessible that still has, like, the Dead Rising style. Yeah. Like I still kind of prefer the first game, but it plays like an absolute butt cheek. I prefer the first game because of Frank. Frank is a better character. Yeah, he's covered wars, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but the, the thing that drove me crazy about four, yeah, is they changed Frank's character and they changed his voice actor. Okay. So like his whole like commentary and his way of talking and also his voice is different. So then that game just feels extra weird. He's definitely, he feels like a totally different character in that game. And it is kind of weird. So with me? Yeah. Okay. So, but, uh, anything else about that? I just, man, I, I just remembered loving also because of Devil May Cry 5 with the Mega Man Buster. Yeah. What were because you saying? You remembered this, something and you cut out. I, was, I, was, I remembered uh, I remember this game because of the Devil May Cry 5 trailer where they're introducing the Mega Man Buster. Yeah. Because in this game, in one of the toy stores, you see like the serve bot helmets. Yeah. And you can find like the toy Mega Man Buster. Can't you find the Blanca mask? Yeah, there's a Blanca mask. Now, later games, you can add like car batteries to the Blanca mask and do the actual like Blanca right. static charge and electrify everybody around you. But in this game, if you do like the heavy duty unlock stuff play through a certain correct way. You can unlock the Mega Man Buster where it's an actual gun huh. that actually just destroys things in one shot. Pretty much. You can also get and lightsabers. Y- yeah. You unlock the Proto Man sword for Mega Man. See, I love shit now, like that. Yeah. In Dead Rising 2 onwards, you just need a jewelry and a flashlight to make a lightsaber. Yeah. Logic. <laughs> also, Frank is one of the best characters in Marvel vs. Capcom. Oh yeah, he's he's a great character in that game. The like, guy enjoyed playing in the five or six times I got to play Marvel vs. Capcom and use Frank. Yeah, a really good annoying team is uh Frank um Arthur from Ghouls, Ghosts and Goblins. Um, fuck. Who was oh scroll super scroll? You could just keep them away forever. But I, yeah, I love I love Frank. I I think for I need to play more of it. I think I have it. It's not on Game Pass, is it? No. Hopefully, it will be eventually. Yeah, it's just a giant pile of meh. I think less, I rented it. Less aggravating. Oh, I had a trial. That's what, there's a trial on Xbox. Yeah. Okay. That makes more sense. Yeah, I didn't. I, okay. Yeah, that's right. Because I remember I didn't like it because it was very serious and Frank was very serious and like yeah. But then once you get into the game, then it's all just excessively goofy because it's Christmas time. Right. At a giant Willamette Memorial Mall, like like it tells you like how desperate they were that they went back to the original mall and rebuilt it to be larger. Yeah. All right. So that's what we've been playing this week. 
we're going to get into a little bit of news now. Uh, I think we'll just start off with this tiny bit of news. They're bringing back, not bring, yeah, yeah, bringing back. They're putting Phoenix Wright on the Switch and Xbox, PS4, and Steam, right? You get that right? Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. So it's uh, all three of the games, the the original trilogy, not any of the spinoffs and stuff like that. So it's, you know, Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney 1, 2, and 3, which I'm kind of curious how they play in certain aspects because they used a lot of the stylus touchscreen stuff on those games on the DS. Yeah. So Did I, mean, you also I guess like you yell just, into it. Yeah, if you yelled into the mic, you could that's how you could queue up objection, but you can't also just hit a button. You know, if you wanted to. Hmm. But yeah, it's just it's just weird to see this become a thing. Cause I never expected this. I, I more expected like the Professor Layton games more than this. Was there a crossover game? Yeah. Because I do believe it's the same studio. So you know who killed the person before? Uh, Well, you kind of have like the scenario set up. And 90% of the time, like the person you're defending is innocent. There's a couple of twists in some of the stories. From what I remember, like I had a a friend. She was playing a lot of the uh, Ace Attorney games. So it'd just be kind of sitting there next to her playing some and she was like oh you fuck you know like so would happen or yeah like the guy takes his wig off like like they're they're like dark serious weird murders almost every one of these things but then absolute ridiculous characters and like straight up anime shit you're like what's going on (laughs) yeah i i might get them i don't know i guess it would depend like if it's a sixty dollar game, I'm not getting that. Yeah, I mean, like they're they're cool games, but I don't know who this this is you know appealing to. Uh, I think it's just they're going for that Nintendo crowd, and I guess the people yeah. who never played it on Xbox and PlayStation. But I don't think that's a big. I think Steam Steam's probably going to be like a big market in Switch. Well, I. Think- I, I- I would say, honestly, I mean, like the overlap of like the Steam community that would potentially have a handheld is probably equal or higher to than the predominant PS4, Xbox One players. Yeah. That's true. You know, I think this is just kind of a a shotgun blast of like these games are on a DS and people don't like playing on DS anymore so here are this is this is yeah. how i wish more games were where it's like you don't want to play it on that little system go ahead and play it on the switch go ahead and play it on your xbox it's like hey we don't have to make new games we can spend a little bit of money to potentially make a lot of money back but that's okay because people like like me like i might buy these games cuz i've heard the stories really good and like the whole Getting people to confess or whatever and doing the objection thing. That seems like it might be a lot of fun. Yeah, when you hear that awful objection, like audio play every time. <laughs> like it's so fun. Yeah, like I would I would probably play that, especially on my Switch. I also have a Phoenix Wright objection finger stylus somewhere around. <laughs> Cause like <laughs> <laughs> friend of mine was a manager at a GameStop right when like I think the second game came out and I walked in one day to, to talk to him about something and pick something up and he just handed me like one of the pre-order bonuses because nobody pre-ordered right he's <laughs> like hey we're tossing these out here you go and somehow that thing's just stuck around forever because it's a decent stylus it looks super goofy <laughs> Yeah, so I'll, I'll play those. Uh, PlayStation announced that the PlayStation Now uh, games are downloadable. So welcome well, to 2018, Sony. Well, again, it's just the PS4 games in the library, all of them, and the handful of PS2 titles that are already currently emulatable on the PS4. Yeah. So all the PS3 library that's on there is a no-go. Because they don't have a working 
full on emulated for PS3. You think? I I don't know. I don't understand anything about any of that. So I don't. I just don't understand why they don't. I know it has something to do with like the chipsets and whatnot, but yeah, well, it's it's just the way the architecture works. Yeah. So the the cell processor was an asymmetric architecture. So like certain parts of the chip only did certain parts of your code work. Yeah. So you have to then have a have a processor considerably powerful enough above where the cell processor was to then run another cell processor inside of it. And then you've got to work out the digital, you know, translation of the way your machinery works to then code that into the digital translation of the way a different machinery works. They all work on different, like, you know, bandwidth sizes, different, you know, like, like as somebody, like I could explain this a lot better if I had time, but yeah. it like, there's a reason why even PC emulation of a lot of PS3 games is still really hard. And a lot, a lot of those games are trash to try to emulate still. Yeah. So hopefully, I mean, I guess that Microsoft is, that's one thing that they're really focusing on is getting all that stuff working. Yeah. But they, they stuck in an X86 environment. So like they've been like they're cause the Xbox comes from the name of DirectX. Yeah. Cause they had built it initially to be a, a, a smaller, dedicated windows platform originally. So that's why a lot of different versions between the 360 and the PS3 had completely different problems because the architecture is so different. Yeah. The the amount of RAM was so different. All all of the hardware was drastically different and Sony, you know, operated audio files in a different format than Xbox and Xbox ran stuff on this, but had less RAM than the PS3 and such and such. Like all this, all this dumb stuff to where certain versions were objectively better, but now you can't really emulate the PS3. <laughs> yeah. Maybe one day they'll Maybe figure one day. it out. Is that, you think that's part of the reason why we're not getting Super Nintendo games right away? Well, the Super Nintendo games is probably just them gating that to decide yeah. what's like financially the most successful. Because, now, because <laughs> the SNES emulation, they just have it. There's multiple high quality, frame perfect emulators out there. Yeah, that I'm can open. load pretty much, except for a handful of SNES games and NES games that had very specific chipsets on the cartridge. Yeah, that did weird things because right, there were separate chips. Yeah, because every single cartridge was its own motherboard. Yeah. Yeah. I so hope, then you I have to emulate that, that really one later. little piece. Mm-hmm. I hope we get Super Nintendo stuff sooner than later. I'm hoping next week I'm gonna talk more about. Uh, like, well, we can go ahead and talk about the Nintendo. Um, Switch Online service launch. Yeah. What have you been playing as far as the uh, NES games? Well, I played a little bit of River City Ransom, which is a side scrolling beat 'em up. Yeah. You know, it's 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 a common complaint I've already seen people posting around is that the the game manuals aren't available unless you go look them up online outside oh, of the Switch. Yeah. So unless you knew that double pressing forward or backward lets you run in River City Ransom, or that to jump you have to hit both A and B. See, I think I'm you know, having like, that problem with the pro wrestling game because it's very confusing. It seems like you can only kick. Like that's the only yeah, real way to win. Yeah, there's different button combo presses you have to do right. that you aren't aware of because you would have read this in the manual. Yeah. Yeah, shit, they need to fix that. Well, it's like, you know, how many people played, you know, Mario for years and didn't know if you held the other button, you'd run. Yeah. 
I guess I always knew that. Yeah, there might be people that don't. Yeah, I've talked to multiple people that didn't know if you held the other button, you could run. Huh. Uh, then also, they didn't know you could do the running slide as Big Mario to get through certain areas. Yeah. Without having to get hurt to get through because you couldn't break enough blocks. Yeah, I've mostly been playing Super Mario Brothers 3. Um, what else? I got the list here. Uh, oh, I tried playing Excite Bike. It's another game that I think I'm playing wrong because, like, you just have to stop at certain points to let your bike, yeah. like, not get hot. Yeah, you overheat. Like, yeah. unless you, I think there's like a certain pickup or like maybe like it's the puddles that slow you down that cools you down. I thought that too, and it doesn't seem like it's doing it. I don't know. It, I haven't played Excite Bike in forever. It's kind of interesting because it's like you're trying to remember all these things or you're trying to rediscover these things, but I guess you would have discovered those things in the manual. Yeah, I guess I didn't even think about yeah. that. I I had played some regular Mario and then Mario Brothers 3. And, like, yeah, some of those, some of those areas are hard, but I had forgotten how wrong it feels that jump is, you know, in the yeah. wrong spot. I might have to swap those. I didn't even realize you could do that. You just do it in the settings? Uh, no, I'm only doing that because of my adapter. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, because I'm using the the uh, the Magic NS. Yeah. Because I've been playing Mario with my PS4 controller. Okay. So I just hold the start button and the X button for three seconds. Or if I was using my Xbox controller is where they started it for was to yeah. swap the A and B there. You just hold the, the button for a few seconds and it swaps huh. the A and B inputs. But I actually, honestly, having stopped and checked out the 8-bit Doe SNES controller I've got, mm-hmm. uh, at least for me, I kind of think leaving it as it is is beneficial because of the way I roll my thumb to be holding B to run and then slide over to jump. It feels more, it feels more natural for me to slide left and, you know, slide right. I don't know. It's weird. Right. I think the only other thing I played some Gradius, I played Yoshi. I didn't know that that was, that's a weird fucking game. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a, it's a weird, uh, like Tetris kind of puzzle game. I don't like it at all. There's two different Yoshi games that are puzzle games before they did Yoshi's Island. I think that's what I was expecting was Yoshi's Island. Yeah. <laughs> I started that game and went, what the shit is this? You're like, what the heck is this? Exactly. I think the this, only this game... is just like less interesting Dr. Mario. <laughs> yeah. The only game I'm really looking forward to is I think I liked Wario's Woods. Oh, Ninja Gaiden. But, um, oh, I also played a little bit of uh, Ghouls and Goblins. Yeah, that game's super hard. Holy shit. Yeah. Holy shit, that game's hard. I I had forgotten like the silliness of like the opening of that game where it's like Arthur just hanging out like on a picnic with like yeah. the princess yeah. or whatever. And he's just naked in his mm-hmm. underwear. With his armor next to him at the picnic. I'm like, (laughs) dude, what the fuck are you doing? That's another (laughs) thing. I keep killing enemies and they drop armor that I don't pick it up. Yeah. I don't understand that at all. I I think, if I remember correctly, the the armor pickups make your lance longer. Oh, okay. Or something like that. You would think I may be confusing the different versions of the ghouls and goblins. Right, because I mostly play super. Yeah, and then there was another like version of it on like PSP. I want to say, yeah, because I owned it. It was like a nicer looking version. That was way better. Yeah, I remember that. So yeah, like I've I've my my brain has been so corrupted by the other better versions of that game. Also, I think there was a version of it that works. Oh, what version? Oh, God damn it, troll. Did you die? 
Hello. Hello? Yeah, the original 1988 version for arcades. Oh, I didn't know I had played that. I had played that one as well before. Okay. Yeah, the, it's it's not drastically different. Ultimate Ghosts and Goblins. I remember playing this. That was so good. God, I just love this game. I really need. I I'm probably not gonna play much of Ghosts and Goblins. I'm gonna wait till Super Ghosts and Goblins comes out on the Switch. This is gonna happen eventually. I believe it will. Uh, let's see. I think the last thing to talk about really is the uh, Telltale closing. Yeah, that was a crazy thing to get home from work and look down and see a random post on Reddit. And it's like, reports are happening that uh, Telltale is closing. And then by the time like I had like taken off like my clothes and changed out, you know, from what I work in, uh, what I sit around the house in, I was like, saw the, the official report. And then slowly over the course of the day, some of the actual responses from the people that worked there, there was like, hey, we were just told to get the fuck out all of a sudden. Yep. Like, the, we, we got 30 minutes to leave the building. The article I have in front of me is from The Verge, and it says that employees were told they had 30 minutes to leave. Yeah. And I guess because they're California, and this is me talking out of my ass a little bit. This is what I read. Because they're California employees and they're independent contractors, they don't get to collect unemployment. And I guess because the company is shutting down, they don't get severance packages. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, the people, like, there's a handful of people, because there was 220-something people lost their job. Because 25 people staying, and the staff was over, like, 250. Um... So, like, a certain percentage of those people were actual, like, regular employees of the business. Yeah. But a good portion, when they're in the middle of a project, are all going to be contractors. So, all the contractors, due to California being a right-to-work state, as they call that term. Yeah. Florida yeah, they, too. they uh, yeah, they're just fucked as far as benefits go. I, I did appreciate. Um, did you see the tweet from Ubisoft? No. So Ubisoft on the course because of where the office is for Telltale, they've got a Ubisoft office in the same town. Ubisoft said, "Hey, come over here tomorrow at noon or whatever at this place. Food and drinks on us and potential job hirings." Holy shit! Yeah, good guy Ubisoft. Ubisoft is doing a lot of good stuff. Because, you know, that's the thing. Like, I had thought about it, like, when I first saw that tweet. Ubisoft is kind of what Activision started off being, but then they maintained. Yeah. So Activision got started by people that made games. It was like kind of like this artist creative before they became this super weird corporate monster Ubisoft, even at the their most scumbaggy business deals, has always done weird creative shit. Like even at the worst of, you know, loot boxes, season passes, special edition DLCs, all that other stuff. Ubisoft has always still made weird games like Child of Light and Valiant Hearts. So yeah. I was I was so happy to see that you know people in the area were already sending in like, hey. Come on over. Potentially, you might have a job tomorrow. Yeah. But yeah. So, people who bought the season pass already for the Walking Dead final season. Yeah, are they just shit out of luck? Projects canceled. They're not getting their money back. Jeez. <laughs> so, Clementine's story will never have an end now. That's, that's the thing. Like, where is this at? I just saw. The company will retain a small team of 25. These remaining employees will stay on to fulfill the company's obligations to its board and partners. But fuck its customers? So apparently the obligations there contractually are for the work they're doing for the Minecraft story mode thing for Netflix. Uh, that was the last like 
primary investor they had in their business. The last contract they had, they so, were hoping we we're going to help them salvage. Yeah. Here's the thing I don't understand. So that that thing goes through. So they're finishing that so it can be so it can be finished and put on Netflix. For whatever that project is of like the tie-in for the the game to the story or whatever. Oh, that's right. There's going to be like a Netflix interactive thing. Yeah. Okay. But then okay, so if Netflix pays Telltale for that and like I go and I buy Batman tomorrow, where the hell does that money go now? Um, probably into escrow to handle their closure and potential bankruptcy. I don't know if they filed for bankruptcy and, you know, cause they are obviously going into liquidation yeah. and not restructuring. So I so guess this some... is a fire sale. There's about to be right. a fucking telltale games fire sale. And that's going to be crazy. So if somebody bought like telltale or they even bought like the Batman, that game series, I guess that money would end up going to them. Like if I bought Batman in the future kind of thing. Yeah. Depending on the way the licensing and contracts work out. Yeah. A lot of that stuff may default to the original IP owners. And then now that money, who knows where it's going. (laughs) Yeah. That's, that's the weird thing with talking about like the NES and SNES, like some of those games is like people at this point just don't even know who really even owns them anymore. Yeah. So this 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 will be interesting to see how this works out. Yeah, it's a crazy fucked up situation. I just can't like, believe it's like it's just so sudden. Like it's literally that immediate to where no one in the company was told until like, hey, beat it, stupid. <laughs> that that should be illegal. Yeah, it, it just it just sucks that yeah, this this one week four hundred video game developers out of a job. I don't understand it. And it's just so weird because it's like Telltale was a major studio. They were working on a new engine. They were working on a Stranger Things game. They were working on a Wolf Among Us Season 2. That was going to be awesome. They're finishing Walking Dead. Like, it seemed like Telltale was on the up and up. Like, things were working out. And apparently things were way worse than any of us imagined. Yeah, like the the tweet I sent you from the guy who... right. Does a lot of work for Forbes. Like apparently, ninety percent of their projects lost in money, right? According and they just sold you on. Batman tanked and was one of the worst commercial failures for Telltale. Minecraft story mode in seven days were making a profit. Uh, basically, only the first season of The Walking Dead made money. Everything between that and Minecraft was a financial failure. Wolf, everything. Post season one of The Walking Dead, Borderlands, Game of Thrones, all failures. Yeah, that's yeah. From Joe Parlock. That's crazy. That's a lot of games yeah. to fail. Yeah, that's for like all the games my- to fail, really. <laughs> for all of their library. Because you, you, they were failing pretty severely before The Walking Dead season one. Because they had made the, um, the Back to the Future game. Which sucked. Which. It, it was okay, but I didn't enjoy it. Yeah. I and own then, like yeah. the Telltale. I got like a Telltale Humble Bundle a while back. So I have like everything before The Walking Dead. And I played them. They're not great games at all. Most of them are like generic adventure games at best. Yeah. It's just, man, it, it sucks. It sucks for anybody who really cared about The Walking Dead. The Telltale game because that first season is still amazing. Yeah. But yeah, I guess you just don't know how a studio is doing really. Even though you yeah. think they're doing well, they turn out to be not at all. Apparently not. Cause yeah, with both Telltale and um Capcom Vancouver, like within the last year, both of those studios had yeah. like laid off like yeah, but Capcom 30%. Vancouver, that's not Capcom going out of business. This is like yeah. all of Telltale going out of business. This is the whole company. Yeah, it's fucking crazy. I hope I know. I hope Ubisoft hires a bunch of people. I hope all these people land on their feet. There's a lot of employees there. Yeah, like I said, between 
Capcom Vancouver and Telltale that's over 400 people that made a lot of games people cared about just out on the streets. And the Telltale people, like you said, you know, they're way out on the streets because they're not getting paid out for overtime due, vacations, right. severances, any of that stuff. They, like most of those people, their insurance ends next week. <laughs> so if their kidneys go to the dentist, they got to go figure that out. I see a lot of things about like the CEOs getting paid. Like I do wonder if like how much of that is true. But they, they might be. Well, because yeah, usually the people in those positions have contract guarantees. Yeah. Whereas like we mentioned before, a lot of these individual employees were contractors. Yeah. And not guaranteed anything other than their initial base pay. All right, well, I think that's it for this week. I don't think it was a short one, like we said. <laughs> well, I'm a rambling asshole, yeah, and so Funko I. Pops happened. Funko Pops had <laughs> happened. That was a good <laughs> chunk of it. All right, well, thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, you can find everything that we talked about today. You can find... Uh, not talk, what the hell am I talking about? I'm tired. We can find all the podcasts. Well, we did talk about old podcasts. So you can find those on futurevillains.com on the YouTube. Follow us on Twitter at futurevillains. Follow me at best in the realm. Facebook is best in the realm gaming. Uh, check out me and Babusa of the Lark Brothers just did a painting uh, live stream of Gaslands. We're going to be doing more of that stuff. Uh, where can they find you, Trollbeard? Uh, just pretty much everywhere. Trollbeard with the underscore. I'm on playstation if you want to catch a game of Fortnite, um you know twitch.tv slash trollbeard with the underscore stuff like that awesome all right well thank you for listening guys see you later bye bye <laughs>